This is Justin from GeneralsJoes.com, and I'm here with another look at a Takara Tomy Masterpiece Transformer. This time it's MP27 Ironhide. Uh, I recently posted a little three-part look at uh, Hot Rod, or Hot Rodimus, as Takara calls him. Kind of breaking the thing down into three different sections, looking at the box and the vehicle mode, looking at the transformation, and looking at the robot mode. I'm going to do the same thing here today with Ironhide. I did them a little bit out of order. I hit Hot Rod first, and then uh, decided to do Ironhide afterwards. Um, and a, a little piece of, uh, of uh, intel when it comes to Ironhide, uh, people who have been watching my, my video reviews, all you know, 14 of you who have enjoyed those, um, you have this guy to thank for them. I hadn't really gotten into the whole Masterpiece Transformers game uh, until I saw pictures of Ironhide and I realized you know, for the first time in 30 years that we were getting a decent version of one of my favorite G1 characters. So um, I, you know, at that point, I decided, okay, maybe I should dip my toes into this, and I bought Optimus Prime and bought Soundwave, uh, and then it's kind of steamrolled from there, and I have Trax, I've got Wheeljack, I've got Bumblebee, I've got a bunch of them now. Uh, Trax is a little disappointed with, um, so I wasn't real eager to, to keep steamrolling ahead, but I'm really glad I did. I was very happy with Hot Rodimus, and um, hoping to be equally happy with, with Ironhide. As you can see, Takara on the back of the box here, they've got some various little things you can... Do. They've got a little size comparison there. Got a little picture of Ironhide in Optimus Prime's trailer, which is cool. They've got two different faces, all the different accessory features. A little, couple little Easter eggs of what you can do with some of the additional accessories that Ironhide comes with. Makes them a little bit more uh, Sunbow accurate, which is pretty cool. Uh, but the box is typical, cool Takara Tomy box, plain black, little Masterpiece logo, uh, so on and so forth. So enough of the box. Let's um, let's dig into this bad boy. I've been waiting 30 years to uh, to do this, so let's hope old Ironhide is worth the wait. All still trapped in this little plastic prison here. We've got a little paperwork to get out of the way. We've got his little instructions. We've got his awesome trading card. I still can't believe I'm looking at Hot Rodimus' stats here compared to Ironhide. Hot Rodimus has actually got higher stats than Ironhide does. I don't know how that's possible, but he does. Um, I can't translate what each one of those stands for. I'm sure it's something, but um, anyway, this is Ironhide's trading card. Random Japanese language paper. And the instructions, which I will be using quite heavily throughout part two of this review especially. Uh, Ironhide's got quite a bit of stuff here. Compared to Hot Rodimus, Ironhide is friggin' loaded. You can see all those different accessories in there. All these different accessories here. He's got a bunch of stuff. So let's pull the plastic tray apart. Pull out the bad boy himself first. And once again, I find myself surprised, not, not disappointed, just surprised at the size of this thing. Um, the van is not huge. It's pretty small. I mean, it's bigger than the G1 version, but not by a whole lot. Uh, it does not look humongous, and it certainly does not look like a van that is going to transform into one of the larger Masterpiece Autobot robots out there. Uh, it's very familiar. It's got the nice red shade that you're used to, the little yellow striping along the edge, which is very cool. The wheels are movable. A little windshield wiper on the back, which is a neat touch. Same thing on this side. This vintage style van is really cool with the yellow stripe there too. It's got the little tilted, tinted sunroof type thing on the top. A couple windshield wipers on the front, the little Autobot logo. Uh, really cool is that it's got a little carved version of the uh, scary G1 flat face in the windshield, which is really, really neat. Um, just in case you wanted to be reminded of that horrible... Uh, a horrible face on that original toy. But just one of the many little homages that Takara likes to do when they uh, when they build out these things, and it's very much appreciated. I love, you know, I, I just love kind of handling these vans. They feel like, or these these cars in general, they feel like sturdy little vehicles that you could just play with on their own without them being transformers. Yet they still manage to transform into really cool robots as well. So the vehicle mode is fantastic. It feels really solid. There's lots of little panel lines, but all the pieces fit really snugly together. Nothing's kind of eking out. There's no obvious uh, robot parts inside. Uh, you flip it underneath, you can kind of see the bits of his legs and some things, but that's about it. 
It's really a great looking vehicle. And of course they've got these his accessories. He comes with an absolute metric ton of accessories. This is probably the biggest thing. Um, can't really tell what it is right there. I mean, obviously it's his little uh, platform slash sled thing that he that, uh, the back of his van turned into in G1. And I know some people have been disappointed that um, the the compartment, the van, the sled isn't part of the transformation, isn't part of his vehicle mode. You know, I don't give a crap about that. I think as long as the figure and vehicle are good, I don't mind having extra pieces scattered around. That is the little chrome rocket launcher. And we've got a chrome missile to go along with it. And we've got the chrome um, gun, whatever the heck this thing is, to go along with it. And I'm trying real hard to keep these, um, these videos short and sweet, but it's going to be tricky with Ironhide because it comes with so much stuff. Now he's got two different laser guns. And on this side, I'll just give a brief outline. He's got two little rocket thruster flames for the jetpack, which, you know, and I'll show you a lot of this stuff in his robot mode, too. He's got um, these things, which actually hook on to his wrists, just like his little um, liquid shooter fingers do. He's got a little radar dish for his forearm. He's got an alternate face. All sorts of different accessories, which I will showcase a little bit more in depth with robot mode, but I do want to, um, you know, just because I am covering his accessories in general in part one here, uh, I do feel like I've got to um, lose everything and just go through the sled because there is a specific way, and this isn't spring loaded by the way, it just kind of slips in there, which is fine. The rocket launcher kind of clips under that, and really it's pretty uniform, these slots and all these little holes can fit. A number of different um, weapons so you're not locked in to using a, a specific format um, I'm gonna try to stick with what they recommend for the instructions just because uh, I have very little creativity when it comes to transformers so um, I try to stick with that but this little handle goes in the slot in the front you've got these laser guns whoops not there 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 and he's got his jet pack which fits pretty much the only place it fits really well is kind of right in the middle there and hopefully you're getting a good view of this we'll we'll take a closer look at it too he's got his little jet thrusters come flying all over the place they go on the edge here and here and then his fingers, his little flame or liquid shooting fingers kind of go on the end. Yes, he's riding around on a platform that has his severed hands on it. That's pretty, uh, pretty sick. These little round attachments that go on his arm go here and here. He's got these little square type um, thruster things that kind of here and here and he's got this little radar dish that normally goes on his forearm but in this case I think it doesn't fit there it fits at pretty much any one of these little slots so you can make it fit right there and that's essentially sled, at least as Takar recommends it. All those little holes and mount points are pretty universal, so you don't have to do it that way if you don't want to. Uh, but also don't forget, on the bottom side, you can store his severed face, because, you know, what what Transformer is like driving around with their own severed face on the bottom of their platform. And there you go. There's a look at that little piece of uh, accessory goodness. I like that it has a way to hold all this extraneous stuff because he comes with a lot of extraneous stuff. So it makes sense for them to give him kind of one central place to hold that. So I'm a big fan of that. Now, of course, we've also got some Easter eggs 
well, on vehicle mode for some of these things. If you want to store, well, first of all, if you want to use, I mean, any of these things that have these like normal handles will plug into the top roof there. So that goes for his normal laser pistol. That goes for this big thing here. It will plug right in that little mount on the top of the roof, which is a pretty cool touch. I like that. Also, if you need to store his guns, um, I think there's a way to store those underneath here. Yep, they kind of plug in like that. There's an added bonus, they kind of hide those cavities and look like maybe, you know, rear axles or something. I have no idea what rear axles look like. I, have, I, you know, I will fully admit they probably do not look like that, but uh, I'm Cybertronian, so that can be my excuse. So that's really cool. They've got some nice little touches for the vehicle mode like they always do. And uh, it's, it's just a neat little addition, neat little different ways, different, different ways you can play. For those of you twisted collectors that actually play with your toys, um, you've got different things that you can do to do that. And there we go. That's Ironhide's vehicle mode. I went a little bit longer than I wanted to, but that's okay. He's got a lot of stuff to look at, and hopefully you, uh, you enjoyed it. Uh, that's a look at his accessories, what he looked like in the box, and the actual vehicle mode. Uh, part two will be coming up, and part two will look at the transformation between vehicle and robot. And uh, that'll be coming up shortly. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like. Think about subscribing. I have more coming. If you didn't like this video, leave a comment below. Let me know why and what I can improve. And uh, we'll go from there. This is Justin from GeneralsJoes.com. Thank you very much for watching.